Hey, hey, friends, excited to have you on with me live today. If you are watching the replay, welcome. If this is the first time you have ever seen me live, please drop a comment new. And if it is your, you've watched before, then just share your favorite emoji. You know I'm all about the unicorn, the stars, and the hearts. So drop your favorite emoji as you hop on. Say hello. I am ready to teach today. So I hope that you all are as fired up as I am because I am telling you what, we are going into a year of prosperity for you. So if this is your first time catching me live, comment below new. If you're catching the replay, comment replay. And if you have been showing up to these broadcasts in the past, I want you all to know that I have started a TV channel on YouTube. It's called EliseTV.com, where I upload all of my videos for you all to catch the replays so you won't be lost in the shuffle. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm seeing so many of my favorite people. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Josh. Uh, you guys, we are going to be teaching, teaching, teaching today because prosperity is your birthright. You were brought into this world to experience abundance, right? You were not brought into this world to be broke. You were not brought into this world to be broken. You were not brought into this world to be sick. You were brought into this world so you could let your, your gifts shine, let your light shine, and so that you could make a difference. All right, so that's what we're here to do today. So I want you to think back into your life and recognize that at some point in your life, you accepted a contract, meaning you, for something that happened in your life, you made a decision to show up in a certain way. Okay, and maybe that was having a quitting or failing spirit. Maybe that is the spirit who is of discontentment. Maybe that is somebody who is bitter. Maybe that is somebody who finds themselves locked up in a lot of drama. Am I right? Am I hitting the nail on the head with you all here? Yet, we're going to get to the good stuff here in a minute. But comment below, where have you found that you have shown weakness in your life because it's easier than actually disciplining yourself? I know that human nature is to try and pull each other down rather than to lift each other up. There's this sort of competition, right? And so I want you to ask yourself, where have I allowed myself to create a contract? Meaning it's a way that you believe that you show up in the world and the world should interact with you and what you deserve, you should achieve or succeed, okay? And so if you have found yourself always setting goals and falling short, now we got to get to the root, okay? I'm going to invite you, get to the root of what is it in your spirit, because it's a spiritual battle here that we're facing. I, I'm just going to put it right out there right now. It's a spiritual battle that we are facing, because here is the truth, right? The devil only has control over your thoughts, over your mind. And here's the thing. If you make a decision at some point, even on a subconscious level, to accept the contract, to accept those seeds that he, the evil one has planted within, then you will continue to play it out again and again and again and again in your life. Now, where do you see that happening? I know for me that when I was younger, I had accepted the contract that I was going to be broke, that we were going to always struggle, that work was always going to be really hard, you may or may not know this, but twice in my adult life, I have lived on public assistance food stamps and that I could have made the decision that that was what I was meant for, right? I could have made the decision. I could have uh, accepted those seeds of doubt that other people around me planted as I started to climb out of those depths of despair, because misery loves company. So if you're surrounded by people that are miserable, they're going to influence the way that you think and what you believe is possible for yourself. So that's why this conversation about prosperity in 2018, we must get to the root. We must get to the root. Think about that. Because if you can get to the root and curse the root out of your life, meaning that decision that you made at some point in your life that you were not worthy of success, that you were not gifted, that you cannot talk to people, that you're too shy, that nobody likes you, guess what? You 
you teach the world on how to treat you. Okay, so if you are always telling yourself, I'm too shy and nobody likes me, guess what? They're not gonna like you because that's the energy that you put out into the world, right? Now, if you show up with a spirit of, I am abundantly blessed, I deserve love, I deserve wealth, then you're gonna find that that's what you attract. Because if you curse those who have made money and you talk negatively about them, how will you ever attract that into your life? Because subconsciously, your brain is always going to find reasons for you to self-sabotage and spin out before you hit that level of success that you desire. Do you see that? Yeah, Andrea says law of attraction. Hello, Andrea, all of this is rooted in the Bible. That law of attraction is literally pulled out of the Bible. You can see all of those verses in the Bible actually supporting what we're talking about here. That is how beautiful this is. So thank you for showing up and sharing that a law of attraction because those of you who believe in the universe or the law of attraction, we're all on the same page here. Yes, we are. So I want to um, thank you, Missy says, says, thank you for sharing that. I want you to think about that then. Where have you accepted this contract that you need to live in fear, doubt, and judgment? Judgment of yourself or judgment of others? Get to the root of that. The devil is a liar. You have accepted the lies. You have accepted the lies. Once you make the decision that you're no longer available for anything less than awesome in the way that you think, speak, and show up in the world, guess what? All of that drama that happens out there that other people are participating in, because remember, they're believing the lies, then it all changes. So are you guys ready for that? Is 2018 your year to prosper? Are you ready to radically shift the way that you think and show up and what you believe about yourself to be true? Because I know that it takes a radical shift in thinking. It takes discipline in how we speak to ourselves and the words that we plant all around us, okay? So drop a comment in the in um, below, if you will, and comment, 2018 is my year to prosper. I am ready. I am going to write a new contract. So now that you've written 2018 is my year to prosper, I want you to comment with what is true for you? What do you know deep down that is true for you? Right? Let's see it. I, I just need to know if we're on the same page here before I continue because I'm going to bring something up next that I think you guys are going to love. And again, when we accept these contracts that we are not talented, that we are lacking some sort of skill, right? That we are always meant to be broke, that working is hard. If we accept that contract and those lies, how can we ever step into our greatness? How can we ever prosper? How can we ever attract that success and that abundant wealth into our lives so that we can change the hearts and minds of those out there struggling in the world? How can we do that? We cannot, right? So it takes this radical shift in thinking. You absolutely must identify where you have been accepting these lies in your life and make this decision that you're not available for that anymore. Because I guarantee you that when you have accepted those lies in your life, you will always fall short. It is not possible to succeed when those are your true north. Those lies are your true north. You can't succeed, can you? Because your map will always lead you wrong if your true north is what those lies are, okay? And remember again, remember this. The devil wins when you believe the lies. The only control he has over you are these lies. That's it. Now, once you break free from this and you have this awareness that you absolutely can tear up the contract, that the devil has planted those seeds of doubt, that when you have taken these seeds that you are sick, you are broke, you are ugly, you are fat, you are whatever, whatever these lies are, when you take those seeds and you uproot them and throw them out and you cultivate the seeds of the truth, which is you are love, you are meant for abundance, you are not meant to be broke, you are meant to prosper on a spiritual and emotional level. You make the decision right now, in this moment, that that is what you are meant for, then 2018 will be your best year yet. And then we can talk about organizing your calendar, we can talk about your goals and your 90 day plan, but it all starts here at the root. If you do not uproot these lies from your soul on a soul level, you will continue to live out again in 2018 what you've lived out years past. 
Are you with me on that? Yeah? <laughs> I love it. ID says, lies be gone. It's time to plant new seeds for 2018. I want you to think this one through. Um, okay. And, and again, I know we're, we've got some people that believe in universe. Some people believe in law of attraction. Some are with me on what I'm sharing from you in verses in the Bible. And I, t I guarantee you that all of these things are interconnected and it's no surprise if you do a little research and connect the dots here, but I'm going to draw your thinking to Hebrews 12, 15. I'm going to read this verse to you to confirm what we've talked about so far. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. You get the grace, right? You already have the grace of God. And yet you find yourself bumping up against the wall and failing again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. Okay? So, lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you and thereby defile you. Okay, this is Hebrews 12, 15, a little bit of paraphrasing and breaking it down for you. But what basically what we're saying is God already has given you the grace. You have already been abundantly blessed. You have that calling on your life. We all do. Okay, but yet you find yourself hitting the wall and failing again and again and again. Lest any root of bitterness take root in you, it will defile you. The root of bitterness, you all, will hold you back from completing what it is that you know you are called to do in this world. You set these goals and yet fall short again and again. Look to the root of bitterness. Where has this bitterness taken root in your life? Who are you holding a grudge against? Who are you waiting for, you, for them to change so that you can have a better friendship with them or whatever, right? Think about where it is that you're finding yourself holding on to this root of bitterness because that root of bitterness will always keep you back from success. Always. So this is why we, we reference Romans 12, 12, commit to the daily renewal of your mind. Because if we do not commit to the daily renewal of our mind, we fall prey again because we're human, right? So this is why it's so important to be so conscious of what we are allowing in, right? That's why we say, do you want to go online first thing in the morning and scroll the Facebook news feed? Or do you want to fill up with what's true, Right? Because what we see online, it might create that root of bitterness. It might pour more water on that plant. We don't want that. Because the root of bitterness will hold you back from your success. That root of bitterness will keep you mad all the time, irritated, right? Driving down the road, swearing at another driver because they cut you off. Who cares? Who cares? Think about it. Who cares if somebody cuts you off while you drive down the road? Who cares? Let them have the right of way, right? So where do you allow that root of bitterness to keep you from your full potential? Let that sink in for a second. Because when we allow that root of bitterness, we cultivate that within our hearts, it will create all kinds of issues. And the evil one will keep you stressing about it all. And as you stress about it all, your blood pressure goes up. Your stomach hurts. You get headaches, right? You can't control all of these things that all these people out there are doing. But when we allow the root of bitterness to take root within ourselves, with root within our emotional body, it affects the physical body. Do you see that? So what I want you to think about is if you have allowed the root of bitterness to take root within you, in your soul, then you are making yourself sick and it is not worth it. Think that one through. Making yourself sick and it is not worth it. How can you prosper when you hold on to this root of bitterness? And I know of people, you all, think about this. I know of people who have become highly successful in network marketing, in the coaching and training industry, it, as actors and actresses. They get so successful and everyone looks at them and think, oh my gosh, they've got it made. They've got it made. And yet, the root of bitterness is there. And they, they hold grudges. They talk about other people. They get lost in drama. Sometimes they can uh, self-soothe. <laughs> We've seen it happen with drugs and alcohol. Think about how people avoid this conversation. This is the conversation that we're not having, is it? We're not talking about how the root of bitterness poisons your soul and poisons your potential. The evil one wins. Okay? So... Unforgiveness is as stupid as drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. 
Unforgiveness is as stupid as drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. If you are holding on to unforgiveness for something that somebody has done to you in the past, it is time for you to let that go. Because you can't enjoy the good times because you're waiting for the bad times. You're waiting for the hammer to fall again, right? You're, you're, you're just expecting people to reject you. You're expecting to be broke. You're expecting your paycheck not to grow. And guess what? That's what's happening. Why? Because you teach the world how to treat you. When you hold on to that root of unworthiness, that is how you teach the world to treat you. And that is what will keep showing up again and again. And what you resist, what you, what you resist persists. Write that down in the comments. What you resist persists. So what this simply means is you are resisting learning this lesson on a soul level, an emotional level. You will continue to persistently see it play out in your life again and again and again and again, right? And here's what the, I want you all to remember this. When people act crazy and they do crazy things, this is their crazy. It's not yours, right? Not my circus, not my monkeys, one of my favorite phrases. And hurting people hurt people. So if you're dealing with someone in your life right now that is causing a lot of drama, number one, you're probably acting a little codependent and you're trying to keep them happy, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that anymore. Okay, have some boundaries. There's a great book called Boundaries and Codependent No More. I recommend it to all people who are entrepreneurs and leaders because you need to know where you stand when it comes to how you're showing up in these relationships and how they're creating drama in your life. Remember, we only have so many hours in the day if we allow drama to derail us and take us off of our highly productive activity and, and derail us and take us away from what we have written down in our planner. He wins again, right? Because you only have so many hours in the day. If you are involved in this gossip and drama, if you are allowing yourself to be defiled by the root of bitterness, then there again he wins. And you again complain about why you didn't achieve your goal, right? It's your upline leader's fault. It's your team's fault. It's the economy. No, it's not. It is you. And this is a hard conversation. Have that meeting in the mirror. Make a decision today that you're going to put this on your calendar at least every month. I recommend to our top leaders that we're mentoring to 80K and 200K, do it daily. I'm talking to you guys daily. Meeting in the mirror. Where have I allowed the root of bitterness to show up again and take me out of the game? Where have I allowed this root of bitterness to show up again and take me out of the game? Because here's the deal. You have as many hours in the day as I do. I allow myself to be derailed for about this much time. How long are you allowing the derailment? I've seen it happen for people for years, for months, for weeks, right? I, and I'll be the first to admit, I've been there. Hello. I'm not, I'm not like totally, uh, how do you say, perfect here. <laughs> but I can own my shit. I'm going to say it right there. I'm, I can own it. Right, I can identify when I spin out of control. I go to my close confidants. I go to my mentors and I say, this is my situation. This is how I want to react. Is this a representation of me returning to love? Or am I holding on to a seed of bitterness? I will go to those people who are um, further along in their lives and their spiritual journey than I am. And I will get confirmation whether I'm on track or off base. That's how I can keep it like this. Okay, and also I'll turn in prayer and, and I'll pray to God to please bless the person. Please bless me. Please release me from the root of bitterness, right? Bless yourself. Ask for the blessing. Ask for God to show up in your life for confirmation. And then you get to move on. And you get to show up in your life with more confidence. Now, this all plays into how you're going to prosper in 2018 because if lack of confidence has been something that has um, been derailing you and then you're finding yourself not attracting the abundance and the money, like, right, the money, money is simply energy, you guys. Money is an exchange for how much service you're providing in the world. 
And so if we are holding, keeping ourselves small with the lack of confidence, the money doesn't flow, does it? it, it we stay broke. Am I right? Have you guys seen that in your lives? Have you seen that in your lives? The more, more you lack confidence, the more broke you stay. <laughs> and the more angry you get about people doing business with you or not, the more broke you stay. Am I right? Because the energy isn't right. The energy isn't right. So you don't keep money because you haven't made friends with the money. Do you see that? And you talk about people that have the money. You don't talk positively about them. I know because I hear what people say about those who have made it in the world, right? They don't say pretty things about them, do they? They don't bless their success. They feel jealous and envious. Am I right? And I'm sure you guys have all found yourselves talking about other people in that way of who have succeeded in the world. And here's the thing. How can you get money to come to you that your mouth is driving away? Think about that. How can you attract the money when your mouth is driving it away? You talk about people who have succeeded and then you're not going to bring it in because you've got this subconscious belief that money is evil, right? And people often misquote the Bible and say that money is the root of all evil. It's not. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So money is simply energy. It's a tool. The more money I attract, the more people I can help in the world, the more schools we can build. We've built five schools in Pakistan. We're blessing dozens of girls to go to school in India. We've built houses down in Uganda as well as Guatemala because we are abundantly blessed because I'm allowing the money to flow through me and the more good I can do in the world, the more blessed that I am, right? So are you a person who has that calling that wants to give big in the world, but yet you're not talking positively or blessing people who are making the money? And so how will you ever attract it to you? Think about that. Think about that. That one is one that can really blow your mind. Take your journal and pen and give yourself 20 minutes to write down all of your beliefs around money, all of your beliefs around money, any belief that pops into your head, even beliefs that you think you've identified that were not serving you, that you thought you cut out as a lie. There could still be something holding on there right? In your subconscious, spend 20 minutes around this. As you go into 2018, how are you going to attract abundance and prosperity into your life? How are you going to attract the money into your life? Well, you've got to first identify the lies that you tell yourself around money. Money is simply energy, okay? And people that are subscribing to the lie that they're meant to be broke, this could be something that you picked up as a child. Maybe your mom said it. Maybe your grandmother said it. Maybe your dad, your grandpa. Maybe on down generationally, there's been this belief around money and people who have money are evil. Maybe someone was, um, somebody had money stolen from their business generations back. I don't know, right? But it trickles down to you. So what are your beliefs around money? Write down one of the lies that you have believed until this video. Type it in the comments. What are one of the lies that you've believed about money? Write it down. And if you're just joining us, welcome Hilda Maria. I'm so glad you guys are here. This video, I hope, will stir your soul. Click the share button if you haven't already, you guys. Um, I want you to think, though, about those. Think of somebody now, uh, somebody that is so blessed with wealth, so blessed with love, right? Think about who that person would be. Just bring them to mind. Bring them into your heart. Think about who that person is. Who is so blessed with wealth and love? Now, I want you to consider this. That person that is so blessed with wealth and love, they are comfortable with it. They've made friends with it, and they expect it in their life. It's not a struggle. They expect it. And it's the birthright, just like it is yours, but you've been believing the lies. So think about the person who is so blessed with wealth and love and abundance and identify the fact that they expect it that they just walk into the room they expect people to like them right and maybe at first they weren't totally comfortable with that but they walk into the room and they decided that they would just see each person for who they are they would smile at them they would acknowledge them in the same space, maybe pay them a compliment, maybe make it their goal to make other people feel comfortable and, and um, like they were part of the group. Think about that person. That's how they behave. That's how they show up in the world. And the world is a mirror to what you believe. Do you see this now? 
So if you're thinking about that and you're, you're going to be um, thinking about, okay, how am I showing up? And let's imagine that you have this root of bitterness that has defiled your confidence. Remember back to the Hebrews verse. But imagine that you have this root of bitterness that has defiled your confidence and you are braced for what you are receiving. You are ready. You are expecting that they will not like you. You are expecting that that person will treat you poorly. And what happens? They do. And you're on a soul level. You say, yep, see, nobody likes me. Yep, see, I don't know how to talk to anybody. Yep, see, I'm still broke. I'm never going to make money. Now do you guys see how what you believe is a mirror for how the world will treat you and how that can change everything once you make the decision it's not true, you've been believing a lie and how the devil wins when you do? It's going to change everything for you going into 2018. However, it will take conscious work every single day. You're going to have to write about it. You're going to have to identify your thinking and where you fall short and how you start believing the lies again. And then you rewrite your story, okay? And Karen says, what you expect is what you receive. Absolutely. Thanks for typing what I'm saying in the comments, you guys. <laughs> I think I love reading what you write. Um, so here's the thing. You get what you expect. And if the evil one suggests something and you accept it, it takes root, right? It takes root. And that's what we're talking about, this root of bitterness, so, if you sow bitterness, how can you prosper? Think that one through. If you sow bitterness, how can you prosper? How can you be free to think your best thoughts, to fight any disease that might take root in your body? How can you have the creativity and the energy to be the person you're meant to be and show up in the world and do what you're meant to do when you allow these, this root of bitterness to take root within you? And if you are preoccupied and distracted and you're subscribing to the chaos going around, on around you, you won't be able to return to love and forgive because your energy will be burnt up on tending to that root of bitterness. Do you see? Because I want you to think about your, your day as being a, a resource. Like it's, I want you to visualize your day is your sunshine and water for that root of bitterness or for the root of love, okay? And if you're not consciously choosing love, return to love, then that water, those resources, that sunlight is going on to the root of bitterness. And whichever one you tend to more, you will get more of that harvest, do you see? So in 90 days time, you could completely change your life if you make the decision today to tend to the root of love instead of the root of bitterness. Because we have both seeds within us, don't us, don't we? They're always at play. And we get to tend whichever one we choose. And yes, Joseph says it. We have the Holy Spirit within us. So he is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Absolutely. And do you want to choose the influences of the world or what is true and good and real and love, right? That's and, and here's the hard part. The hard part is our culture says to feed and tend to the root of bitterness. Our culture, our culture does this. We can see it in our schools, in the workplace, on our social media. We can see it on mass media and in the movies, right? It's the root of bitterness. It's to, it sells. <laughs> People make a lot of money as a result of it, right? Because of the root of bitterness, because it's easier, and we are hardwired to choose what's easy because it conserves calories. And in, in historically, we didn't have the abundance of calories that we do today, right? So there's a brain hack for you. Understand that your habitual thinking day in and day out is simply a result of, of in the past, having few calories available to us. And so it was easier to think and, and act in the same way day in and day out. If you want to change your life, you have to radically change your thinking. You change your thinking, you change your emotions, you change your habits, you change your words, you change the people around you, you change your bank account balance as a result of changing your thinking. So in 90 days, you radically could change everything about your life. Would you like that? Comment below in 90 days if your life will be radically different than it is today with the awarenesses that you're having. Because I know that it was like, like the bolt of lightning into my life when I had this, this truth that 
there wasn't something wrong with where I lived or wrong with me and my personality. You know what was wrong? What was wrong was that I was choosing to believe lies. That's what was wrong. That is empowering. Think about how empowering that is. So let me read to you from my notes. Um, okay. If all of your energy is being expended in the chaos that you are living and you are preoccupied, then you don't have the focus to win. And all of your energy goes into fighting what you cannot change. If you are waiting to be happy, waiting for someone else to change, then you are giving them all of your power. Okay, again, that's like drinking the poison and waiting for the other person to die. Hello, dumb. So here's the thing. I don't have time to get tangled up in all of the crazy. I don't have time to be in charge of the circus and all of the monkeys. <laughs> I just don't have time. I have my life to create. I have schools to build in this world. I have families to feed and provide for. Families, not just my own family, but Thousands? Millions? I don't know. I don't know what God wants me to do. But I know that if I get wrapped up in other people's craziness, and if I take things personally, that I will sell myself short. And when I sell myself short, I don't become financially abundantly blessed. And therefore, I cannot do the good works that I'm meant to do in the world. Do you see? Through financially giving. Um, and, and also through just sharing my story. Because I know I change people's lives when I'm transparent and authentically me. Which you do as well. Right? But if you are hiding, if you are hiding and you're staying small and quiet, you're not sharing your story. You're not inspiring people. Each of us are meant to inspire each other. Right? We must lift one another up. And if you are not choosing to lift yourself up in terms of the way you show up in the world, you pull others down. It is not one, or you don't just get to be neutral and apathetic. You either show up and do good, or you're part of the part that's tearing things down and making it ugly in the world. And I'm sorry, I don't want to be part of the ugly. I'm done with that. Yeah, Maria said she hid in 2017 and she is done. That's right, girl. You name it and claim it. You are done hiding. You're done being quiet. You're done worrying about what people think about you. Who cares? If you always return to love and you tend the root of love instead of the root of bitterness, if that's where you tend and you put your sunshine and your water there, those are the fruits of your labor. They will come to fruition. Okay, that is what you are meant for. Are you guys on, on with me on that one? Pick your favorite fruit emoji because that is the fruits of your labor. Type it in the comments. Um, so stop, stop, stop getting tangled up in the crazy. Stop praying about and worrying about all of these symptoms when the truth is you just need to curse the root of bitterness out of your life. And remember this, that Jesus cursed it at the root. Jesus cursed it at the root of bitterness when he was blessing and healing people. He would curse it right out of them, right at the root, okay? You have that power to do that too. I know you do. I know I do. Anytime the root of bitterness shows up in my life in any way, I will curse it at the root. I will banish it from my life and I will ask God to show up and bless me and confirm for me and make it abundantly clear that what my next best step is and then I do it, okay? I count down five, four, three, two, one, and I get back into action. Because then, otherwise, if I don't, I start to fall prey to the root of bitterness, and the evil one wins again, you guys. And here's the other thing. Are you a leader? Comment in the comments. Are you a leader? If you are a leader, I'm going to face, I'm going to share something with you that I think is super important. And here's the thing. The evil one wants to take out the leaders. The evil one will plant seeds of doubt in your mind and in your heart. The evil one will try to derail you through things that are presented to you, maybe to entice you, right? To distract you. Drama in your network. Drama on Facebook. Drama in your personal life. Because here's the thing, the leaders are the light. We shine brightly into the lives of those who do not see yet, right? And so what is the fastest way to shut down further in love in the world? Take out the leaders. 
So I invite each of you. I'm going to be praying for you as you comment. I am a leader because I'm praying for you. I know it's a spiritual battle and he is coming after you. Believe me, if any of you have struggled with being a leader and have seen him show up in distraction and creating drama and chaos in your life, now you know. Now you know why. It's because when he takes you out of the game, you're done. And we don't have influence when we're out of the when If I'm out of the game, I don't have influence to share with you and inspire you. Oh my gosh, now you're going to make me cry. Stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> so I want you to think about when you are uh, distracted by other people's drama, that what, really what's going on on a spiritual level is a spiritual battle. So you gather around your prayer warriors and you have them pray for you. You pray for each other. Because when we don't do that, he wins. Now don't do those comments of the cute little crying faces because that'll make me cry. Give me the hearts. <laughs> okay, then we return to love. Now, I don't know why this brings up tears for me, but I think it's because Oh, fine. I'll just cry. Okay. I'm going to get it over with. If I get it over with, then I'll feel better. And I will see, this is how the devil does it to me too. Ah, I get embarrassed. It's not about, it's not about me. It's not about me. Okay. There's strength and vulnerability. Now, why I cry is I feel your heart. And I know that if he takes you out of the game, then we do not spread love and light in the world. And on a spiritual level, at a, when it's a spiritual battle, then we have to recognize that each of us have to unite together, pray for one another, curse the evil one out of our lives, and that when we as leaders are taken out of the game, he wins. All we have to do is return to love. Now, here's another another um, case in point, like an example. I'm living in an example for you right now, right? Because I could have stopped the live stream and he would have won because I wouldn't have gotten to the heart of my message. Do you see? So the tears started. I started to get self-conscious. I started to say, oh my gosh, I'm crying on Facebook again. What is wrong with me? Like these thoughts were happening like that. Now, I am being an example for you of how you get past it and you overcome it. So, whoever prayed for me in that moment, thank you because it gave me the strength, right? And I continued forward. Now, as leaders, that is what we must do for each other. Do you see this? So, we return to love. We make the decision that no matter what, on, on this spiritual level, where like these emotions, like they derail people, they literally will take people out of the game. They will quit their business because they are too embarrassed that they cry in front of people, right? They're too embarrassed. And so they will actually quit their business. But when they quit their business, their light goes out, right? Their light goes out. And when their light goes out, they don't bring people back to God. They don't bring people back to that space of love, which is abundant. Like yesterday, you all, I was reading um, a book that was so incredible that it was literally bringing me to tears because I was like, oh my gosh, we have so much work to do in the world. And the only way we can do it is if we do it together, right? I can't do this by myself. I can get on here and talk to you guys and cry and be, you know, be vulnerable, but I can't change the world by myself. I need you to step into your greatness. I need you to be seen and heard. I need you to go on and cry or talk to people or tell people that you're no longer available to listen to them gossip about somebody else, right? And I gave these words the other day on a leadership call and I said, if you have a lot of drama in your team, go directly to the person who is creating drama. Maybe it's multiple conversations. I don't know. Pray first before you call them up though and ask God to give you the perfect words for the moment and bless them. And then you just pick up the phone and you say, hey, listen, I'm going to say Sally. Hey, listen, Sally, I know that you have a goal for financial freedom for your family. So do I. And I've been participating in conversations with you that are not helping you to achieve that goal. And I'm no longer going to do that because it doesn't serve you. And when I take when I take time out of your day to talk about so-and-so or whatever situation or commiserate about the economy or why our business isn't growing as fast as we thought it should, da 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 right? If I call you up and start talking like that, I want you to call me out. 
Like there is nothing wrong with having these conversations and and go straight to the root and, and uproot it and get it out of your life. Like go to these people and say, I am sorry. I've been distracting you from creating the life that you deserve. I've been distracting you by cre- by feeding that drama and talking about another person or so-and-so or doing whatever. And it's not productive and I'm sorry. Okay, do you guys think you have some conversations you need to have like that? As I tell you what, you will prosper if you do because you only have so many hours in the day and those people in your network only have so many hours in the day. And it's easier to talk about other people or situations than it is to build your business, am I right? Why does it happen that employees always stand around the water cooler or the break room and talk about people or situations? Ryan, he works at corporate. He could probably comment on that. <laughs> but think about it. Why is it? It's because it's easier than actually doing your work, right? You know what your work is. It's to reach out and to change people's lives. So do it. Stop falling prey to what's easy. No more of that. Okay. Now... I'm going to check my notes. All right. Next, organization. I like to keep a tracker for all of the people that I am in conversation with. And that tracker helps me to stay organized with my follow-up because the fortune is always in the follow-up. Hey, Sage came to visit. Now, think about your organization. Do you have all of your contacts written down? Do you have a list of people that you've been talking to and creating? They're using that list for your follow-up. And this is my notebook. I keep all of these names in it and I just follow up with them. And it's my goal to write down two new names per day as I go about my day. And those are people I meet out and about. They're people I meet on Facebook, etc. cetera. Um, so that has helped me to stay organized with always growing, right? Rather than falling into what's easy. Yes, the fortune is in the follow-up. Now, your planner. This is so important. How many of you all are using a planner? A paper planner. Let's see. How many of you are using a paper planner for organization? I love a paper planner because what you can do is you can make a wish list of, of what you want your life to look like. So drop it in the comments. If I could have anything, be anything, or do anything, what would it be? Right? If I could have anything, be anything, or do anything, what would it be? Answer that in the comments if something pops into your head. Nothing is, there's no right or wrong answer. So just write something. It's whatever's on your heart. Um, then you prioritize. Okay. So you have to look at your, your list of what you want to have in your life and plan it out. Like when do you want, what's the deadline for that thing to come to fruition? Three years from now? One year from now? Three months from now? One month from now? So you have to actually prioritize and write it down. What is it that you want to see come to fruition in your life? So we prioritize next, right? And then we create our specifics. What are your specifics that you need to do? What do you know that is true for you that will take you towards the goal of financial freedom? Tanya and Tammy, right? Think about that. What do you need to do every single day to achieve financial security and financial freedom. I see Josh say that, Heidi say that. You need to do something every day. Personally, I believe it's conversations, right? It's conversations with people. It's service, it's love, right? It's helping them feel and live their best life. If you are in service to people, you will be abundantly blessed. You return to love, you will be abundantly blessed. And remember, you don't know what it is for them in terms of their timeline. It's simply your job to offer, and it's their job to accept or decline. Okay? It's your job to offer, and it's their job to accept or decline. Now, one little tip I have is keep the ball in your court for follow-up. Right? So if they're declining at the moment, 
You say, I understand it's not right for you right now. It wasn't right for me the first time I heard about it either. But I know how things change. So I'll reach out to you in a few months and I'll share with you what's new. Okay? Perfect. Goodbye. That's it. That's how I do it. Keep the ball in my court for follow-up. Then I write on my calendar three months out. Follow up with Julie. <laughs> See? That's how you use your calendar. Now, I want you to look at your calendar for today. Your, today is the 29th. Tomorrow is Rob and my anniversary. Yay! Um, today is the 29th, and I want you to think, what is the number one activity I could take to move the needle on my business. If I could only do one thing today, what would be most productive? And then do that, okay? So, for some of you, it's to send out 20 messages. For some of you, it's to talk to new people. For some of you, it's to follow up. I don't know what it is for you, but you are an entrepreneur, you are smart, you can figure it out. However, those of you who are not moving the needle on your business every single day aren't taking that time to think because where your focus goes, energy flows. If you're distracted and it's chaotic, your business is chaotic and you're not creating results. If you are focused, that's why they put blinders on racehorses so that they don't see what the other horses are doing. They just see the finish line out in front, right? Think about that. If you are focused, your energy goes in that direction. So if I have tasks written on my planner, my personal to-do list and my work to-do list, if I have these things written down, it is happening. Why? Because I show up for me, always. If I write it down, I am committed to doing it. Think about this. There is no greater wounding that you can do to your soul than not to show up for yourself. So if you say you're going to do something, be a man or a woman of your word and do it. Decide to live your life to the highest ethical standard, right? And do it. It is that simple. And if you have trouble actually doing it because you're scared and afraid, I want you to think about it. Why are you taking this personally? It's not about you. You don't know what the other person's timeline is. Okay? Yes, Heidi, integrity. So if you've made a decision that you're going to start to use your planner every single day. Josh is one of these people. I see him commenting, so I'm going to call you out, Josh. Josh has decided to use his planner every single day. He has written it down on his mission statement. He's created a mission statement for the year, which, Josh, we can put it in the comments after the video. But essentially, he's decided to show up for himself and be a man of his word, right? He has made the decision, put the stake in the ground, like life is changing from here on out type of deal, okay? I always like to think of like, what is that? There's a movie and, oh my word, what is it? And it's Mel Gibson or somebody and he's got the flag and he's standing at the top of the hill and he plants the flag and like the wind is blowing. That's what it reminds me of. Like we've got to be that person in that, that frame of mind who plants the flag and you're like, it is different from here on out. It is, I am living in prosperity. I'm a... I'm going to be a woman of my word, whatever it is for you guys, right? Think about that though. You're, you want, yes, Braveheart. <laughs> Did they do that? Is there a scene from Braveheart where he does that? I don't know. Maybe it's just like, maybe that's just my visual. I made it up. <laughs> I don't know. But that, I want you to think about how, like, like really, you got to have the visual. You got to have the visual, right? Like take your 10 minutes to think, to visualize what's my life look like when I've planted my flag and I'm a person of my word and I show up. I've drawn my line in the sand and I show up and live by what I say I'm going to do. I write down what I say I'm going to do. I do it when I say I'm going to do it right? How does your life look? How do you feel? How do you feel when you say, I'm going to work out three times a week and eat high quality organic food. I'm going to drink eight to 10 glasses of water a day. I'm going to do my hard work. Like, how does it feel? You guys, it feels freaking awesome. There's no better feeling than feeling like you are accomplishing. Hashtag winning. That's what I say. Hashtag winning. Yes. Hey, Jennifer. Oh my gosh. Happy New Year, girl. Um, think about that though. Okay. Now, this is an important piece because 
who wants to live a crappy life? Like, the crap is for crap. Like, crap is for crap people who just want to crap around all the place. Like, forget about it. I'm not part of that. No. I want to live a life of freedom and abundance and have sunlight when I want sunlight in Hawaii or, or skiing in deep snow in Montana when I want it. Like, that's the life I want. No. I don't want anyone's crap crap for me. No. I don't want to be anyone's employee because I don't want to have to get up when they tell me to or go to work when they tell me to or have the days off when they tell me. No, not for me. I made that decision. I drew my line in the sand. I put that, planted that flag, right? I was going to be a woman of my word and show up and have integrity because that would create this freedom that I desire where I can go to, Mon go to Hawaii or I can be in Montana in a blizzard. It's up to me. I get to choose, right? Like I have that freedom. I have the financial freedom for it. I have the ability, right? I could buy a plane ticket to Hawaii tomorrow if I wanted to. It, I mean, I got the choices because I decided to show up for me and to build a business that created freedom for other people. I planted my flag and I decided that if I say I'm going to do something in my business, I freaking do it, right? Because crap, crap life wasn't for me anymore. So I have to be my own boss. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Think about that. Meant to be, it's up to me. I had to decide that I was going to be a woman of my word who was going to show up and do what I said I was going to do. Because what's the number one reason people fail in the business? It's because they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe they're worthy of success and financial freedom because they haven't gotten to the root of the bitterness in their life and they allow chaos to take over and they spin out of control all the time. And, and then the other thing is they say they're going to do something and they don't do it. They just scroll the Facebook news feed, which by the way, psychologists have created to create addiction in your brain so that you'll go on there and waste your time and buy the crap they sell. Uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> you can watch my videos though. I won't sell you stuff. <laughs> but I will remind you to return to love and get back to the heart of what's true for you. Okay, so click subscribe on this video. That reminds me, or follow so you get my videos. Now, as you're thinking about your life um, and going into this year, decide that you will work your business when you're at your highest energy level of the day. That's when you'll do those things that are the hardest for you to do that you procrastinate on. Generally, for any entrepreneur, it's reaching out to new people and building their network. I don't care what entrepreneur or business that you do, that builds a business. Whether you're a doctor, a dentist, a chiropractor, a personal trainer, a network marketer, right? Everyone needs a network to have a business. They need people buying their stuff. So it doesn't matter if you're in network marketing or some other business, it doesn't matter. The number one thing that will build your business is relationships and cultivating new relationships, doing your follow-up. Those are your productive priorities. Anything else, you can ask yourself, is this a form of procrastination? And at the heart of the procrastination, what am I afraid of? Type that in the comments. I want you to have become very aware of yourself where you spin out into procrastination. And at the heart of that, what are you scared of? Because procrastination generally is rooted in fear. And fear stands for false evidence appearing real. It's not true. It's false. Okay? False evidence appearing real. It's the lies. It's you, self, it's you selling yourself short again, right? It's not true. We don't live that way anymore, right? 2018, we prosper. We believe what's true, not the lies. So here we go. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for us because I know I've gone on a little bit long. But, oh, snow blowing on our deck. <laughs> but basically, I want you to think about how am I going to show up in a new way in my life and in my business? And to get back to um, that topic of gossip, remember when we were talking about that? Well, I got a good little piece about that for you all. And I think I'm going to shut off this video and create a, start a new video. So click follow or subscribe on my video. You can also go to my profile and click see first so that you see my posts and you'll never miss one of these videos. And I have a, a quick video about gossip. I'm going to make this video it's a, it, because gossip will destroy your business. So I'm going to teach you how to confront gossip so that you can destruct it if it's taking root in your business. You guys good on that one? Do you like it?
All right, I'm gonna end this video though so that we can do a separate video and um, they can people can just get that content real quick. Okay, love you all. Thanks for showing up. I hope this was helpful. And I will come again with, to, with another live video for you very soon because as we go into 2018, I believe that believing what is true for you, which is you were meant to prosper and it was your birthright, uh, will create the freedom that you desire. But you got to get to the root of it, right? And cast out and curse the root of bitterness. Do not let it take hold in your life. Do not let it create chaos. Don't participate in gossip, drama, negativity, commiserating, or any of those evil things because they will not create the freedom that you say that you desire. All right, let the hammer come down. We'll talk soon. Mm -hmm.